question I hear a lot is how can I come up with better models? The solution is easier than you may think. Let me show you. There are five stages of modeling. They're all essential and the reason why you may struggle with creating better looking models is because you either skip over or lack skills in at least one of them. These five stages of modeling are research and reference, block out, details and textures, render and repeat. Now, before we start, let me tell you that the best way to get better at creating awesome models is to follow a well-structured material. You can do this very easily by joining our free jumpstart hard surface for Blender course. The link is in the description. Enjoy. However, I can give you a few useful tips that should instantly improve the quality of your work. Number one, research and references. If you do not use them, you are doing it wrong. Doodling from memory is fine, but our brain is far from perfect and it also is an isolated unit. The reason why AI will always surpass human brain is because it works as a network of individual processing units or programs. They communicate with one another and fill all the gaps instantly. This is what gathering and studying references will do to your design skills. Now, gathering references is not enough. You also need to know how to work with them. Copying from references will not help you grow as an artist. Instead, look for design cues and elements that inspire you. Then try to build upon them in Blender. Another way is to look at references for about one hour or so, then work from memory, using ideas and elements that stuck in your mind. Finally, make sure you know what you want to model. Having a goal will help you to to stay within a certain design language and if you don't you may end up with some Frankenstein of shapes and ideas. Consistency is what creates harmony and balance. Good design is based on those principles. Number two, blockout. Blockouts are the backbone of your models. They are the foundation on which the whole design rests. If your blockouts are weak or unbalanced, so will be the entire model regardless of how good the details or texturing is. Spend twice as much time or more on the blockout phase. Make sure it's balanced, makes sense and offers good ground for detailing. If the first blockout doesn't work, you can always start from scratch. The trick is not to rush into detailing too soon. If you do, two things may happen. One, when you work on an isolated area, you may lose the general view of the model and start adding details which won't fit. And two, if you want to make major changes, you will have to destroy all the details you've created which is not really an efficient way of working. I usually create a few blockouts until I'm happy with the overall idea before even attempting mid-level detailing. Number three, details. In this stage your blockout is complete and should guide you through the detailing phase. Details should complement the blockout and overall design language. Think of them as spices used for cooking to enhance the flavor. Too little of them and the food will be bland and if you overdo it then it will be inedible. Finding the golden middle is the key here and that comes with practice. We have a fantastic course on that actually called Shape Bootcamp where we go in depth into the subject of detailing. If you're interested I drop the link in the video description. Now there are key principles that you should follow when detailing your models. Number one, 70-30 rule, which in short means leave 70% of the space of your model detail free and detail the remaining 30%. And negative space is basically the 70% of detail free areas, which allows for eyes to rest or travel between islands of detail. Then you have more advanced techniques like echoing, or in other words, reusing the same elements in various areas with slight alteration to shape, angle, etc. And finally, texturing, which should act as a bond that glues everything together. Think of texturing as dressing up. If you have a good posture, so you have a good block out, and your fit means you have good detail, it's much easier to look good in almost any clothes, right? But remember that clothes make the men, so it does matter what you put on. The same with textures. Slapping random stuff or overdoing the damaged textures, etc. will look just tacky. So follow the design language of the model, do not use too many colors and also follow the design rules. A good practice is to start with one color and cover 70% of the model, then use another color or texture to cover remaining 30%. Lastly, use the tertiary color to add accents and details. I really don't use more than four colors in 90% of my work. Now for rendering. Unless you model for yourself, then rendering is a must-have skill. 
skill. If you want to stand out, get jobs, be noticed, then you won't be able to achieve this without proper skill in rendering. Rendering is the packaging the product comes in. The better the package, the better chance for it to sell. Simple as that. In addition, rendering involves composition, lighting, framing, and all these could only improve your knowledge of design, since all of these stages follow the same principles. Now, last one is repeat. The difference between an amateur and a professional is very simple. An amateur can get lucky, but a pro delivers quality content consistently. Repetition is what makes you a pro. If you repeat the same thing for a long period of time, you will be very good at it. Now, by repetition, I do not mean modeling the same thing over and over over again. No, I mean staying immersed in good design language and being persistent in your studies. Without repetition, you will fail. Without persistence, you will always stay in the noob area. So research, model, render, repeat. Now, here's my tip for you on how to improve quickly. Study what you suck at. Think of what you don't like because chances are you don't like it because you don't know it. So whether it is rendering or blockouts, that is what you should focus on. The key secret of improving fast is by studying your weaknesses. It is also far easier to go from 1% to 30% rather than from 98 to 99%. You see what I mean? So you can very quickly up your game by improving your weakest areas. Now, if you're a beginner, I would highly recommend grabbing our free jumpstart hearts surface for blender course which will help you to get on the right path it is easy to follow fun and it has been downloaded by over 55,000 people the link is in the video description thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one